Hallelujah. So, um, uh, I'd like to say, even though the devil is the chief architect of troubles, they become a great tool in God's hands to mature his children into their inheritance. Hallelujah. Now, you know, we have a controversy um, over the places. You know, we have some people out there that say, oh, oh God, God is the one who has created trouble. So, how do you explain a loving God? You know, how do you compromise the troubles and the circumstances that we see on the face of the earth? In general, how do you compromise it to the fact that He is a loving God? So, but we see in the scriptures all over that the, dog, the devil is the real troublemaker. So can we see Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19? Can someone read for me please? Isaiah chapter 59 verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. From the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. Mm -hmm. When the enemy shall come in like the flood. When the enemy shall come in like the flood. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. The spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. So it is the enemy who comes in like a flood. Hallelujah. God's, God's word is to lift a standard against him. And his work, as we see, now we say he's frustrated, going to and fro, looking for whom to devour. His work is to raise up storms, to raise up troubles on the earth and in all mankind. So let's see, he even tempted the Lord. Let's see Matthew chapter 4 from verse 1 to 3. So we're going to be doing a little reading. Matthew chapter 4, verse 1 to 3. And in the New Testament, we saw even the devil tempting the Lord. So if the devil is if the devil tempted the Lord, surely he's going to tempt all of us. So now, here is our disclaimer. God does not cause tempests, tornadoes, Hurricane Harvey, Hurricane Maria, but the devil does. So let's see Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. Revelation chapter 12, verse 3 to 4. Amen. Go ahead. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Mm -hmm. And behold, a great red dragon, mm -hmm. having seven heads and ten horns, mm -hmm. and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven, and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, 
but to devour her child as soon as it was born. To devour her child as soon as it was born. He appeared with all this, all this uh, fearful illustration. We see the dragon. So now let's see um, verse eight. The same Revelation 12. So let's see this fearful devil, this killer, this destroyer, this great dragon, this lion. Let's see his fate in verse 8. And prevailed not, neither was there place found anymore in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible said he prevailed not. So I don't know. We should not remain vulnerable to the devil because even though he causes all the troubles of the earth, even though he is in charge of sicknesses, even though he is in charge of perils and you know sudden death and all that, all you know peril, he prevailed not. In translation, we say he did not have enough strength. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So say to your neighbor, the devil does not have enough strength over me. Amen. Amen. So let's see verse 12. Verse 12 of the same revelation. Therefore rejoice, ye heavens. Therefore ye rejoice, ye heavens. Mm -hmm. And ye that dwell in them. And ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you. For the devil is come down unto you. Having great wrath. Having great wrath. Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. Because he knoweth that he had but a short time. So this is the reason why we have trials and temptations as Christians. This is the reason why there is or much trouble on the face of the earth. The Bible said that rejoice, O heavens, and all ye that dwelleth therein. But woe unto you, O earth, O earth, because the devil has come down to you in great wrath, knowing that he has but a short time. I want you to understand this morning that even though that the devil has the power to inflict people that if you go under the cover of the Holy Spirit, if God is in the center of your life, and if the Lord is the one controlling your life, it doesn't matter how, many, how much power he thinks he has. Uh, verse 8 said he didn't have enough power. Hallelujah. He's not going to defeat a Christian. There is no possibility for, there's no provision for a Christian to quit his faith. No matter what the devil is doing, no matter what challenges, no matter whatever we go through, it is the wake up call to fight. The Bible said, and Michael and the host of the heavens, they rose up and they fought to defend the territory of the Lord. They fought to defend the name of the Lord. They did not fear the devil because they know he did not have enough power. Hallelujah. So rejoice all your heavens because Jesus has conquered on the cross. And he has given us the ability to defeat the enemy. He has given us the ability to defeat every demon. Every demon of any kind. Be um, demon that are um, responsible for bad characters. Every sinful demon, every sinful habit in your life. You can conquer it by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your testimony. If you read further, we'll see it. So, we are not going to be living like Jesus was defeated. We are not going to be living like we can be defeated. Say to your neighbor, you can't be defeated. You can't be defeated. Trust in the Lord, Trust in the Lord. and follow his righteousness. Follow his righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, we've seen the devil. Now, we're going into the main reason for them today, which is God's divine orchestrations. Now, on the other hand, God's discipline and test play vital roles in detecting our choice between God and the world. Amen. Now, this is, this is it. God's discipline plays vital roles in detecting our choice between God and the world. 
every time we are faced with storms of life, it doesn't mean that God did not see it coming. Every time we are faced with troubles, every time we are faced with challenges, and I want to I wanna give you a perspective of, a ch of challenges. Challenges and breakthrough, the, the line between them are blurred. They're not different. It depends on who is on your side. And it depends on how you handle them. I'll say it again. Challenges and breakthroughs. In as much as everybody shouts for breakthroughs and cries for challenges. But I tell you, some challenges that come in our life, they make us better. Mm -hmm. Some challenges that come in our life, they make us stronger. Mm -hmm. the, some challenges that come in our life, they make us holier. Mm -hmm. When I gave my life to Jesus, one of my friends in the scripture even came to me and said, Casey, I have not studied my Bible for the past two days. But I'm like, is he, does his father have a separate heaven? Is he planning to go to a, a separate heaven? I do not believe <laughs> that it is possible for a Christian <laughs> because I know I was, I was very busy that time but I still studied my Bible day and night. So he showed me a weakness that made me think like, I felt like pushing him away. <laughs> I mean, I didn't say nothing but like in my mind until one day. <laughs> That faithful week, God said, okay, let me show you it's not by power, <laughs> but by mind. I, I put alarm. I was, I, I, I don't, I'm not used to putting alarm to pray or to study my Bible. But I put alarm, and the alarm hit. <laughs> and my mom woke me up. The alarm is ringing. I woke up, and I slept. <laughs> it happened to me three consecutive days. And I fell down before the Lord and I began to cry. So this is pride. So sometimes God uses discipline. So it might not be so good the way you see it. But God has a way of making you better with it. Depending on how you handle it. Hallelujah. Amen. It is, now it is retarded to say when you don't know what to do, do something. No. This is very retarded. When you don't know what to do. Go before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Someone said, when you don't know what to do, do something. That's how one man broke a machine worth 800000 Because he didn't know what to do, but he did something. And he blew up the spot. <laughs> and they had to take it out, out of his paycheck every month after month after month. So he applied the principle that is not the way. When you don't know what to do, when the circumstances hit you hard, fall before the Lord and ask him for direction. Perhaps the Lord is trying to take you to another level. Hallelujah. Amen. Perhaps the Lord's time is at the corner, but he's waiting for his um, appointed time in your life. So I don't know how we see circumstances, but I'm going to say it again. Circumstances, positive and negative circumstances, they are blurred. The line of uh, treating them as being, uh, like praising God for them is blurred because it just depends on who is on your side and how you handle it. Because God knew that even though Moses was born in Egypt, if Moses should rise up one day and say, let my people go, number one, he went to school, uh, he went to the higher school, um, Egypt was the world power, so God gave him the highest education. If he should have said, let my people go before time, they will stop his education. If he should have said, let my people go before time, he wouldn't have um, um, encountered discipleship. So God let him take whatever he needed and then let him leave that place. Coming back after 40 years to tell him to come back to the same thing I told you to leave. God, you must be out of your mind. Humanly, you would think like that. What are you doing? How can God tell me to leave this thing and ask me to come back to it after 40 years? But he was a baby when he was there. So God was a matured man. A man who would be able to lead. And unfortunately, it took that long to get him ready. But we thank God that the will of God prevailed. Hallelujah. Amen. So, and I'll just say, um, um, 
On the other hand, does discipline and test play vital roles in detecting our choice between God and the world and also create chances of understanding of understanding how God works. So let's see the book of Judges 14 from verse 1 to 4. Dealing with something. The strongest, the strongest freak in the scripture. Let's see how God dealt with this guy. Judges 14 from verse 1 to 4. Today you can read for me. Hallelujah, the Lord is good all the time. Okay, I can read. Alright. Yes, thank you. Fourteen from verse one to four. And Samson went down to Tina, mm -hmm. Timna, and saw a woman in Timna mm -hmm. of the daughters of the Philistine. Mm -hmm. And he came up and, and he told, came up and told his father, father and mother. Mm -hmm. And he came up and told his mother and father and said, I have seen a woman in Timna.